Hello, my name is Thomas. I'm a PhD student from the University of Leuven in Belgium. And in this short video, I will introduce the controller for a quasi-passive hip exoskeleton. Before introducing the controller itself, let's first take a look at the exoskeleton at hand, which has been developed by our colleagues from the University of Brussels. In the video on the left, I'm wearing the exoskeleton. The exoskeleton provides support whenever you're lifting objects from the ground. It contains two modules, a passive back module, as well as a quasi-passive hip module. The quasi-passive hip module contains a parallel spring mechanism that can be coupled or decoupled. In the figure on the right, we show the mechanism or solenoid responsible for the coupling or decoupling. As soon as a solenoid is engaged, a user will start to feel support when he's flexing forward. Apart from the solenoid, the exoskeleton also contains encoders, one located on each of the hip joints such that we can register the hip flexion angles. The controller for this exoskeleton thus needs to decide whether to engage the support mechanism in the hips or do nothing. Our approach is to use higher order knowledge about the motions being executed such that we can then make smart decisions on whether to engage the support mechanism or not. And we do this using decision theory. To be able to use higher order knowledge about the motions being executed, the exoskeleton needs to have access to a database of known motions. To create this database, I've recorded myself while performing different types of motions, and I've used the sensors on the exoskeletons to record myself. I've performed squat motions, asymmetric stoop left motions, and asymmetric stoop right motions. Next. Using a technique called PPCA, or Probabilistic Principal Component Analysis, I have transformed these demonstrations into motion models. The black line in the figures is the mean of the demonstrations, while the gray area indicates the variance in the demonstrations. The exoskeleton then uses these motion models in the database to detect ongoing motions, as well as calculate the probability of ongoing motions. Once the exoskeleton has recognized the motion, it now needs to make a decision about whether to engage the support mechanism or not. To do this, we use decision theory. This means that we will first think of the actions that the controller can make, as well as the outcomes or situations that we can end up with. The first action that the controller can do is to engage the support mechanism. And there are two possible situations that we can end up in. The first situation is the one in which a user is getting the support that he or she wants. This is a positive situation. The second outcome is the one in which the user did not want support, but is getting it anyway. In this situation, the exoskeleton is hindering the user. To both of these situations, we now assign a utility or usefulness score. The green one is a positive score for a positive situation. The red one is a negative score for a negative situation. A similar reasoning has to be done for all the actions that the controller can do. In this situation, there is only one other action that our controller can do, which is doing nothing. Then for each of these actions, we can then calculate the expected utility. The expected utility starts from the utility scores for all the situations and weighs them with the probability of ending up in such a situation. These probabilities follow from the motion models that we have introduced earlier. The controller will now make the action that maximizes the expected utility, so that we always do it best for our user. The resulting behavior is shown in this video. In the top right corner, you can see the output of the exoskeleton. As you can see, the exoskeleton is able to recognize motions as well as estimate or provide an estimate of the probability. Apart from the probability and a detected motion, the exoskeleton is also able to provide you with an estimate of the progress of the motion as well as the expected utility score. However, these last two variables are not represented here to keep the video clear. The advantage of this approach is that it's easily adaptable towards different types of sensors as well as it's easily extensible towards different types of motions. In future work, I will try to set the utility scores of the different outcomes using a biomechanical metric, and I'll also try to evaluate the controller on subjects. Thank you for your attention.